your seat, so bear with me for a moment, please. Beginning at verse number 23, and it reads, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Amen. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Amen. My subject for this evening is the prize of eternal life. It's obtainable. Amen. You all may have your seats. Amen. It is obtainable. Amen. So what does it mean to obtain? Obtain is a verb, and it means to get, acquire, or secure something. Um, since it's a verb, it is an action word. So nouns are person, place, things, or objects. They're just there, but verbs actually do something. You have to do something. So this means, like I said, it's an action word, and I'm gonna give you a couple examples. So to obtain a diploma or a degree or some type of certification, you must study, you have to do something. All right. It's not just handed to you, you have right. to work at it. Um, Sister Johnny said this morning that she has a LSW, a license. And she told us in order to get that um, license, uh -huh. she had to study, mm -hmm. she had to pay a fee, right. and she had to go sit and take a test yeah. right. in order to obtain that license, to right. get that license. Um, to get a driver's license, to obtain a driver's okay. license, you have to study, yep. right. you have to go to the BMV and wait however long they make you wait, <laughs> you have to pay a fee, and you have to take a test in order to obtain or get your driver's license, okay? Right. So now we're clear on what the word obtain means. Um, Paul was telling the Corinthian church how to obtain eternal life. Yes, uh -huh. right? yes, so let's talk a little bit about Paul and the church at Corinth. Uh -huh. Well, Paul wrote two letters to the church at Corinth, and we know this as 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Uh -huh. um, the first letter to the church at Corinth was written around A.D. 55, Paul wrote this letter to the church from Ephesus. So he was in Ephesus when he wrote the letter. And he also founded the church at Corinth okay. during his second missionary journey. <laughs> Corinth was the most important city in all of Greece during Paul's time. And it attracted great crowds of foreigners from the east and from the west. So if you think about it within the United States, think of places like New York, um, Los Angeles, um, parts of Florida. These are kind of tourist attractions. People from all over the world cleave to New York. They want to go to LA. So there's people from all over, all different types of people. So Paul was really genius when he put a church there because there was a lot of people there and there's going to be a lot of traffic there. But while Corinth was a tourist attraction, it was also home to many forms of idol worship. It was in Greece. And we know the Greeks had many gods, small g, okay? The church at Corinth was also a mixed congregation of Jews and Gentiles alike, okay? So again, Paul was quite genius when he put this church there. So the Corinthians had sent Paul a letter, and they were asking him questions. They wanted to know what to do and how to do. And so Paul answered them because he wanted to correct some of the issues in the church. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have regular landline phones. They didn't have email. So they sent him a letter. So the modes of communication were letters or person to person. So they sent him a letter, and what did he do? He wrote back. That's how we get first and second Corinthians, okay? So now you have the background. The church at Corinth, they were babes in Christ. They were young. They were a very young church, and they needed spiritual guidance, like a lot of young churches. So in first Corinthians chapter three and verse one, Paul says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Right. So he had to talk to them in a way that they could understand. Right. Mm -hmm. I've got a two-year-old niece. I can't talk to her the way that I talk to my children, which are much older, at 11 and 14, they can understand a lot more than my two-year-old. So I talk to her in a way that she can understand. That's what Paul did when he was talking to them about running the race. 
He had to talk to them carnally to get them to see spiritually. Okay? So for this reason, for their immaturity in Christ, Paul gave them the example of running the race. Okay, so let's talk about why that was important. Remember, where did I say the church at Corinth was? It was in Greece. Greece, mm -hmm. Greece was a lot of idolatry. That church at Corinth was located in the middle of idolatry, so the Greeks had many gods, little g. Paul knew his audience when he was writing this letter, okay? The Isthmian games were held in Greece at the Isthmus of Corinth, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it was in honor of Poseidon, the sea god. Okay. So these games were like the Olympics that we know today. Mm -hmm. Now, Sister Sam talked about earlier how her favorite event during the Olympics was the track and field. Mm -hmm. I like the track and field also. I like to watch them. Um, <laughs> one of the events during the Isthmian Games was a race. This race, no matter how many participants there were, there was one winner. And that's why Paul said that. That's why he said that to his audience at Corinth, because they were familiar with these games. So it didn't matter how many participants there were. Today we got, what, the bronze, the silver, and the gold. So, you know, the top three people get a prize. Well, during this race, the Isminian Games, there was one prize, and it was um, a crown of dried celery leaves. That was the crown. It was a perishable crown. So if anybody's ever had flowers and you have them for a while and they sit in water, eventually they're going to dry up, right? What happens after they get so dry? You go to touch them and boom, dust. It's all over your kitchen counter or wherever you have it. They wither away. That's what this crown did. It was a perishable, it was a corruptible crown. Okay? This is what Paul was talking about to his audience because they were familiar with this. Remember, the church was sitting in the middle of idolatry, right? So Paul did not leave his congregation without any hope or any help, just like Jesus. We, we've got lots of hope, and we've got help. So in verses 26 through 27, he tells them that I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Again, he's relating to the race, putting his body under subjection. So anybody that's running a race, You've got to behave a certain way. You've got to eat a certain way. You've got to train. This is what they were, um, they, they knew and what they could relate to. Uh, my sister and I often call each other and we'll have all kind of crazy ideas. I'll call her and say, let's get some airline tickets and go somewhere or let's do this or let's do that. And she'll do the same thing with me. So about eight years ago or so, um, one of us came up with the idea and I think it was hers. She says, let's run the Air Force Marathon. <laughs> and I said, okay, that sounds like a challenge. And so we decided we weren't going to run the full 26.2, but we were going to do the half. So we were going to do 13.1. Now at that time, neither of us had ever done 13.1. <laughs> but we thought, you know, it's a challenge. We can do this. You know, we'll figure it out. And so we, we went to the gym, and we, they had a training program. And so we got the training program, and we watched YouTube videos, and we got subscriptions to Runner's World magazine, and we went to the, the shoe store, the specialized shoe store for runners. Now, if anybody is a runner out there, you know you need special shoes. I go to the store, and they take an ink pen, and they make little dots on my foot, and I try on shoes, and I go outside on the sidewalk, and I run back and forth so they can see how I run. And so I was preparing for the race, okay? So stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. So we were preparing for the race, okay? So in preparing for a race, I am not going to feast on junk food, okay? I am going to eat healthier foods, foods that nourish my body for the race. In a spiritual race, I'm going to feast on fruits of the spirit, okay? Fruits of the spirit for a spiritual race. Um, for uh, the marathon, again, we were training to run that race. So Paul tells us again, he gives them more hope on what to do with their walk with Christ, right? Again, he was relating a carnal thing, the race that they knew, to a spiritual race. All right. So in Philippians 3, 13 through 14, Paul says, Brethren, 
I count not myself to have apprehended. Yes. But this one thing I do, forgetting yes. those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now, the thing he said that's key there, he's paying no attention to the stuff behind him. Yeah. I can tell you in the races that I run in, I can care less what's behind me. Yeah. I am looking forward to get to that 13.1, that finish line, and to see if I can see it. I know at one point I got to mile 10 and I literally said, thank you, Jesus, because I knew I had 3.1 left to go. It didn't matter. I was happy the team was behind me, but I could care less. I'm not turning around trying to see what's behind me. I'm looking forward in the natural. Our spiritual race has to be the same thing. Whatever is in your past, guess what? It's in your past. And you have repented. Ask the Lord to forgive you. That stuff doesn't matter. We are to look forward to finish that spiritual race. Now, again, we're tying in the natural, the carnal race with the spiritual race. Neither one, we care what's behind us. We serve a God that is so good and loves us so much that he has given us an opportunity to obtain because he is not a respecter of persons. During the Isminian games back there in Corinth, one winner. And that was the first place we're in with him. Thank God we're not like that. He does not look at us like that. If that were the case, the first person that died in Christ would be the only one to get to heaven. That's not our story. We all can obtain a Okay? And I'm going to tell you what. He left his word our Bibles with many examples of how we can obtain, right? Mm -hmm. Remember Jacob, how he tricked his father and he was a deceiver, but through him came the 12 tribes, right? Mm -hmm. Peter, Jesus told him, you're going to deny me three uh -huh. times tonight before the cock crows. And Peter said, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'll never do that. But guess what? He did. Yes, and then what did he do? He repented and became so blessed and so anointed People wanted just to be in his shadow. Yeah. He was that anointed. Yeah. Look at Paul. Okay, so we talked about Paul. He wrote Corinthians. He wrote Philippians. He wrote a lot of the New Testament. We know he was the one out to persecute the saints. He was on his way with yeah. letters in hand. Yeah. But guess what? The Lord met him right where he was on that Damascus yes. road. And look how much we have from his witness and from yes. his experiences. Again, God didn't leave us with no hope. He didn't Amen. leave us with no help. He gave us help to where no matter where we yes. were, we can go forth in him. Yes. So let me show you something. This is a medal. And this is what I got from one of the races. This is an example of a corruptible crown, okay? So it's not actually celery leaves, but it can probably tarnish if I kept it outside in the rain. And um, if I move and put it in a box somewhere, how many of you know whenever you move, there's always that one box you can't find? And you say, I know I remember packing it, but I can't find it. It can get lost. I've got children. Any of y'all got children? Once they get their hands on something, you don't know where it's going to end up. It could be under the couch cushions, in the trash, in a toy box somewhere. This is an example of a corruptible crown. This means nothing. I got a drawer full of these things, y'all. I mean, I got plenty of them. I just happened to pick this one up because it was the biggest one and it had color and it was cute for demonstration. But that mean anything. This will not get me into heaven. It got no value whatsoever. In fact, I'm sure I paid for it when I paid the registration for the race. Right. Yes, this Bible is what gets us into eternity. This is what we can use to get to, to obtain eternal life. These Bibles, and see, it's so smart. God is so smart because the scribes that transcribed this way back a long time ago when it was just the Old Testament, our Bibles have been translated in over 700 languages. And then parts of the Bible have been translated in over 3,000 languages. So there is no excuse for you not to obtain. No matter what you speak, what language you read or you hear, you can listen to the Bible on audio, you can read it, you can have somebody else read it to you. There's no excuses. We all can obtain. So I'm gonna leave you with this. Don't run a race that gets you a corruptible crown like this, okay? Run the race with your Bibles that gets you the, the crown, the incorruptible crown of eternal life. How many know that God is good? And God is good what? And all the time. And all the time, God is what? Good. Giving all 
to my pastor, Michael. I said, Michael, I love him. Matthew Austin. Amen. To our bishops and executive board, and you know, just the ministers that came before me and after me. Truly, God is such an awesome God. You know, um, I count it an honor and a privilege to, to stand here. And I said I wasn't going to get emotional. I knew I was going to get emotional. It's all right. I knew I was going to get emotional. It's all right. I got, can't see with my glasses on, can't see with my mom. And I knew just because of what the topic was. The topic was, it's obtainable. And I'm going to reread the scripture because some of us was listening. Some of us wasn't. And it's okay to repeat some things. It's okay to repeat it. In 1 Corinthians 9, 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. With you. With you. Partakers with who? You. No. Yea, not. That they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that she may obtain. That every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we do for an incorruptible crown. And define obtainable is that we may, that it may be obtained. That may be procured or gained. So it's a, it may be obtained. So a lot of times I have to ask myself questions. And I have to ask my, myself, well, what am I running for? Mm -hmm. What am I running for? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And what is the prize that is obtained? Uh -huh. Now I have, God bless, four grandsons and sports. Mm -hmm. I raised daughters. I didn't raise boys. And they love basketball. They love football. They love track. And every time I turn around, I feel like I'm at a what? A sports event cheering my grandkids on. They want to hoop like Jordan. They want to play football like Emmett. And these are the names that I know. I got to go back with the things that I know. They want to buy the gear so they can be like Mike. The people that they look like <laughs> will be like Mike. Be like Mike. <laughs> and I begin to think about that thing. And I'm like, in order for them to even get there, they have to have a trainer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They have to have somebody to train them. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mike didn't just become Mike. Right. Right. Come on. Emmett just didn't become Emmett. Right. Right. Florence Griffin just didn't become Florence Griffin. There was somebody there training them in the way that they what? Should go. Because why? They want to master this thing. They want to be the best that they can be. That's right. And this is where I said I wasn't going to get emotional. Because I had a bishop. I know we got the whole of faith in the Bible. And we got people that we look up to the Bible. But God gave us disciples down here on earth. People to look to down here. People to follow down here. See, I was born in MPGT 25 years ago. I was born into this organization. I was born into right here. So I had a Bishop Austin that trained me, that they discipled me, that told me, okay, if you want to master this thing, you got to learn how to fast. If you want to master
had to get out. There was no option. There was nothing. People strive. My grandkids are striving for an incorruptible crown, but I know one day that they're going to strive for a crown of glory. That they're not going to be like Mike. They're not going to want to sing like Whitney. They're not going to want to run like Florence. They're not going to want to swim like Phyllis. Because why? They only can win once a year. I don't know who won the Super Bowl two years ago. But I know who ran this race before me. I know that I had a mother Barry. This is a life 
slow race. Yes. That's right. It's not one that's going to be over when they blow the bell or the whistle or however it goes. I've never been in a race. <laughs> but it's a lifelong race. Yes. And he, we want you to understand that it's a faith race. Yes. And it's not all about speed, yes. but it's about endurance. Yes. The crown goes to those who endure. Not just to the one that's fast. Because you know fast will run out. And I'm a, I'm a witness. Fast will run out. I say run down. But this race is to him that endure. And this uh, portion of scripture where our theme came in, the Lord had me to look back over some of the verses prior to that. And Paul was, excuse me, talking to the people about having to give up his rights for the people. And we have to give up our rights for others. Why are we running this race? Why are we running this race? We got to take our time for somebody else. Because everybody not on the same plane. We ain't all on the same intellectual level. My Lord is a little slower than other people. Uh -huh. But because God has brought you to where he brought you, don't mean you should be too high to turn around and help your brother up. We ought to have some time to invest in somebody that needs the word of God. If they can see us living holy, but they don't quite comprehend it, we ought to be able to, come on, let's talk about this thing. Let's get in the word and see what God says. We ought not to be running so fast we're running over nobody. But the Lord gave in my spirit for this message. Be careful how you race. Take heed to how you race. Take heed to how you're running while you're running. Hallelujah, Jesus. He don't want us trampling nobody. He want us to run. Look, we got to run with consistency. Yes. And Paul said we got to keep under our body. Yes. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you got to keep under your body yes. and bring it under subjection. Yes. Everything this body wanted, it can't have. Yes. Everything this body wanted, it don't need. Yes. But we got to get in that word and find out what God said. Yes. And we got to yes. start aligning ourselves. I heard the man say last night, we got to get in line with God. Yes. And, that's a, and that's a journey right there. For us to get in this word and see how to line up with God's word. Because God is the one that set the tone. He set this race. I didn't set it. You didn't set it. We didn't get no say about it. But if we want to get this incorruptible crown, we got to run the race that he set. Not a race, but the race. That one portion of scripture said we got to run. Let me see if I can look at one up for you so you don't say I thought about it. Maybe. All right. All right. Look at That's that. in Hebrew 12 and 1, I think. Okay. Yeah, Hebrew patient. 12 and 1 said, uh, Wherefore sin, yeah. we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Let us lay aside every way. Uh -huh. Everybody got some things they carrying that they need to be let go. Yeah. Stuff you need to be got rid of. Yeah. Y'all yeah. women know how we are about cleaning out them closets. Uh -huh. We'll yeah, pack Lord. it back or... Uh, uh, <laughs> Pack it, pack it, pack it. We're not our way, but we'll pack it back. We got stuff we should a long time ago. Long time ago. Got rid of it. Let somebody else. Yes. The song Say it. Says, Lord, when you bless me, you can trust me. What? I'm going to bless somebody else. <laughs> but do we bless somebody else yes. sometimes? But it said there, let us lay aside every weight and be seen. Now, if there wasn't no sin, he wouldn't have said so. He wouldn't have said so. Somebody packing and walking around with some sin. Jesus. I, I, I couldn't help it. And I, I'll do better next time. You better say that. God, no, I'm just trying. I'm doing all I know. No, we're not. From the moment that you read the word and it said, Thou shalt not die, you was held to that right then and there. To say that. He said, Thou shalt not commit fornication. You was held to it right then and there. Right right then and there. Yes. Yes. So we got to learn how to let, and, and like the sister <laughs> said, we got to learn how to fast yeah. and yeah. pray. Some things is, is too much for us. Yeah. I, I heard folks say when they couldn't quit smoking, it, they needed a lot of help. Sometimes uh -huh. we need help. You know when we get our help on our knees? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get down on them knees and talk to your father. Yeah. Which yeah. is in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. The song last night, I think they say, if you pray, yeah. He'll ask yeah. Somebody ain't trying to really run this race. Right. They on a race. Hallelujah. But I'm My trying Lord. to get to the eternal life. 
God. Yeah. And he done placed it within my reach. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah. He said, and let us run yes, with patience. Don't get over, over ex excited because you'll mess up. Every time I get over excited, I mess up. He said, but we got to run with patience. It's, it's some things that we need to pull off. Yes. And then he listed some more things further down, and I'll let y'all read that at your leisure. It's some things we need to be putting on while we're running. When you go to run out your house, don't you stop putting on some clothes? There's some things we need to take off. I don't go to store in my pajamas. I take them off. And I put some clothes on. I make myself appropriate. When we're coming before God, we're going to have to stand at the judgment day. We're going to have to look at this word and dress up. And the soul said the dressing up room is what? Done here. Too late to wait till judgment comes. But we're running a race and we're trying to see our king in peace. I think I got a minute or two. I'm running. Hallelujah, Jesus. We got to keep the body.
with you. All you got to do is walk down the aisle. Hallelujah. Let them lay hands on you. And make up your mind that you're going to live right. That you're going to be restored. That you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Healing is obtainable. Hallelujah. But you got to give up this word and decide to follow Jesus. And then he's in the house. How many? It's all. I'm getting ready to cut up right here. Hallelujah. I can't help myself. 